I think it's just scheme and, uh, and game plan. You know, obviously when the game starts, energy starts to flow. Hopefully we'll have 18,000 in there. There's no way we need to start off slow at home, but we haven't been home in a while, so it's going to be, you hope to come out and be like, we're back home, we're excited, but you just hope not to get a slow start at home, coming back with that type of energy in the crowd. And, uh, but game plan is what should not allow us to uh, get out to a slow start. Yeah, I've had big games in the forum before, so I'm, I'm just excited to get there. This, this is the first one this year. I know, it is the first one this year, but, you know, I'm, I just love these opportunities, man. I'm not really looking at it as any game that I haven't coached thus far, like in, as far as the big games at home. You know, we've had the Houston's at home. We've had Alabama here. So I'm just, you know, looking at Clemson as one of those big games that I, I have to be uh, sharp and, uh, and have the energy for my guys. Well, we've been working on it every day, and we put some drills in every day, and it seems like the guys are really listening and understanding how important it is and not overlooking it anymore. I think they felt like the ball was just going to fall in their hands before, even though we were working on it. But now you can hear them constantly talking about it, saying, hey, we have to box. We have to turn. We have to see where the guys are coming from, and we have to, we have to get those rebounds. What did you prepare for Clemson? What has stood out to you about this program? About Clemson? Uh, well, Clemson is, you know, they're hungry because they haven't won the way that they wanted to win. Main reason why P.J. Hall came back, main reason why Joe Girard transferred from Syracuse to there, they want to win. So they're very hungry. And to be 9-0 and right now, they're, they're very confident. And uh, the thing that stands out is it's been a team that's been down, but now they're, they're up and they're, they're loving where they are right now, you know, playing with, playing with a lot of confidence. I think any coach would tell you if you win the rebounding battle, unless you're just fouling like crazy, you win the rebound battle and the free throw battle, that you have a good chance to win every night. And uh, rebound is definitely not giving them second shot attempts is, is main, it's the main thing. So to that, to that point, against Texas A&M, down two bigs, not come back to play, only 12 minutes due to foul trouble, you guys played a lot of small ball and still won that rebounding battle. Is it a, when you look at the, the stat sheet after, do you pleasantly surprised or could you tell that that was While the game was going on, it seemed like they got every offensive rebound, all those tip outs, because they got a four or five tip outs in a row. But it's preparation. It's what we prepared for. It's what we've kind of made our focus in our practices. So it doesn't shock me that the small ball, we rebounded better. And, you know, it's just we're, we're preparing ourselves to do that on a nightly basis. That makes a huge difference, man. We'd be undefeated if he and Caleb and, and Jay Quan were playing at a high level. We wouldn't have lost to Nova. We wouldn't have lost to Ole Miss. They struggled for about four games offensively, shooting percentages from field goal and three, and just didn't have it. The main reason why we won the last two, they've scored, you know, and you just need your guys to be your guys. They got to show up. We shirt that up. The problem is guys are trying to get fouled. They're not trying to foul. They're trying to steal the ball. So we said you can't hold the ball because they're thinking as soon as the ball comes in, they're going to foul. No, it was too much time left on the clock. So we put ourselves in a really bad situation trying to wait to be fouled instead of getting the ball up the court. So, yeah, we've definitely shirt that up by saying get the ball up the court and it doesn't matter who shoots the free throws. But they were trying to get fouled. That's why it looked so, so bad in, that, in those segments. I think he, yeah, I think he, I definitely he's going to find it, but I know he's making a conscious effort to be more of a playmaker. 
while his shot is not on. Even when his shot is on, he's still going to be that guy. He likes to get the ball to his teammates. He likes to make the extra pass. And when his offense catches up, like he was really – he shot the ball really well against Jackson State. And then he stopped shooting and started trying to find teammates. But that's the way we know that Jay Corn can shoot the basketball. And at any given time, that could turn. I don't think it took a negative toll. It took a positive spin because we bonded more together, being in the hotels, being on the road. And, uh, you know, I never wanted to play away from the FedEx Forum, be away that long ever again. But, you know, the bonding definitely worked for us being around each other, for sure. So we can rule out the six, seven game road trip in the future? I won't say no, but it's, it's going to be hard for, me to, <laughs> hard for me to do that again. Yeah, again, Caleb asked for that. I didn't do it when he first asked. But when you ask for that, that means that you want that for your own mental to get comfortable. And it seems like he's more comfortable now. He's still going to play starter minutes. He just, I guess, needs to see it first. And he's seeing it first. And then because it, it was so many scores in the first group, there was really no time for him to really get comfortable. When he comes into the game, they know that what he's coming into the game for. So that's made him relax a lot more. Mm -hmm. So next year you go there. Did they demand that you go there first? Because obviously if you were able to get them, wanted them to come here earlier, um, you know, maybe you could move you around the schedule a little bit where you didn't have to leave for a month. Right, yeah, for sure. No, um, it just worked that way, honestly. But no, we always asked them to come here first because we just needed the home games. We want to have great home games here, if I'm answering your question properly. Right. Um, but, you know, it's to me – I put that schedule together before I knew I had who I had on the roster. And we didn't get these guys until late, so it could have been way uglier <laughs> for me if I would not have gone out, gone out and gotten the guys that I've gotten. But again, that's just standing on faith. But yeah, we, we asked those guys to come here first. But you have to play the type of schedule. We do, because obviously, you know, you're seeing all these teams losing in the top 25. You're seeing teams jump out of the top 25, 10, 11, 12, 14 spots, winning one game. Got the 13th hardest schedule. We can cry all we want, but just watching it, it just makes you wonder, like, what is it really all about? You know, and that's how we have to have those, that non-conference schedule to get the respect. But when we win those games, it seems like we don't move the needle and that we don't get the respect. Do you think it was a level of disrespect that you guys feel right now? It, it's no other way to look at it because 13th hardest schedule, I don't know who the 12 other teams are, we beat a really good team at home, and they're still ahead of us. That's enough disrespect. I mean, if we're not in the top 25, we're definitely supposed to be at least ahead of Texas A&M for now. Hey, Kenny, with the two together, how close can you get to Well, that's, it's getting closer, but it's still a ways away. We're still learning each other. We're still learning the offense. I'm putting new defenses in as we go. As you all know, my team start playing better late January, February, because Every team I've had with well, the last three years, teams, the guys have come in late, and we haven't been able to bond. So I'm slowly putting things in as I go. But it's getting better, better every day and every week. What is Jordan Brown's status right now? His status, as far as I know, is sick. That's all I know. I mean, we're just trying to support him from afar. And um, that's all we're doing as a team and as a staff. So he's not with the program right now. Like, he's away. Like, he's, he wasn't at practice today or he's not in the He's not at practice, but he's still with the program. Are uh, JT and Davis kind of giving you KD and DeAndre vibes a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can say when they're both playing really well, they give you those vibes well of uh, KD and, and Dre. Absolutely. That's exactly how I feel. You hit the nail on the head with that because you don't get that often, you know, and to get it back-to-back -back years with separate guys is special. Speaking of JT, you told some of us after that last game that him and Malcolm led these player-led, player-only meetings, and that's how they got back on track. They kind of rallied um, their 
teammates and whatnot. Had you heard about that? And the second part of that is how valuable is that when you've got guys that are willing to step up and kind of fix problems internally without yelling at the interviewer? Yeah, no, I, I knew that they were doing some things, but it makes me feel good that those guys are leading those meetings in a positive way. You know, hold themselves accountable first and then hold teammates accountable. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing. You know, I, I've always thought that great teams are player-led, but they're really coach-led with players that understand the mission and go out and spread that mission. So that's what they're doing, and that's what they did. Definitely appreciative of that because that lets me know that their focus is on winning. Yeah, I can see Malcolm being bad cop, JQ being good cop, because Malcolm's been here. He's like, hey, you guys better do this because <laughs> I know <laughs> I know what's going on. Kenny, you mentioned earlier that Kenny mentioned about the, you know, Malcolm fouling out, so you had to go a little bit smaller, and we're able to still win the rebound more. What is the difference between what Clemson presents and A&M presents if you're in that same situation with the presumption that there's no Jordan Brown and all you have sidewise is Malcolm? What they present is they look for the high low, they look for the inside every possession. And that's a little more dangerous. At AM, they didn't look for Henry Coleman every possession in the post. They're gonna look for PJ in the post. They're gonna look for the other bigs in the post. So if we go small, we're gonna have to fight the post. We didn't have to fight the post against AM. We had to really guard Hefner, had to guard Wade Taylor, had to guard the other guys on the perimeter. I think he just has to be smarter. I think he's smart enough to understand, you know, what the refs are looking for, and he needs to stay away from those things. He needs to do what we call doing your work early. If it's a post, you got to front the post way early. Don't start trying to scrap from behind and grab a jersey. They're looking for that because they watch film, they talk, and then Malcolm is not the nicest kid to the refs, so that hurts you too. <laughs> All right.